Jessie, how's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the time out today. I thought I was going to get an Irish accent for some reason, but you um, are not Irish. I am not Irish. I'm an Australian living in Ireland, though. I bet that's a very lovely situation to be in. It is. It is. Um, I could do with better weather, but besides that, it's actually a great situation to be in. And I have to say, I was almost late to this meeting for two reasons. Why? And those two reasons were you. I had. Well, this... I'm sorry. And now I need to know why. Well, this morning I had um, What's Your Pleasure, the Platinum Pleasure on repeat all morning. I love, I love, Jesse that I didn't feel like I was in, in Dublin. I felt like I was just escaping to wherever I wanted to escape to. Oh, that's lovely. Thank oh, you. No, thank you. Because I think it's what we really need right now. And then I started binging your podcast, Table yeah. Manners. Yeah. Like, so I was just listening to Dan Levy then. I was like, I need to stop all of you because I actually need to go talk to Jesse now myself. That's a good episode, though. That's hard to get away from because everyone loves Dan. So, yes, I understand why you were late. But you're not even late. You're not late, actually. Sorry, you're not late. I've just, yeah, I've taken up your whole day. Well, and do you know what? It is lovely. How, how is that for you, knowing that you can bring so much pleasure to people? Because that's what you did to me today. And I'm not being, you know... I'm going to tell my mum that, who's downstairs about to do some uh, promo thing for my book that comes out on Thursday. And, she, and I'll say, mum, I just bought lovely Serena, so much pleasure. And she's going to be like, well, oh, I can't swear. She'll, she'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll basically laugh in my face and tell me to F off. <laughs> well, what brings you pleasure? Uh, food, food. My children, I should say my children first, then food. Um, my children, especially when they're sleeping, God, I love them when they sleep. Um, they are just so angelic and beautiful and lovely and they um, don't make as much mess. And, uh, and, and food, these are my two great pleasures. And um, so music didn't rate a mention there. Well, look, How, that's pretty really bad, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's actually not. It's actually not because I, I think it's great that you have other things going on in your life and not just music. Look, that's been the best thing that's been that's happened to me in the last few years that I do have other things and it just balances everything out. So when I go and make music, I, I, I adore it and I appreciate it so much more than it when it was my only kind of bread and butter, my only thing that I did. What has it been like though, because now you're releasing music at two different times. You released during the pandemic, mm. releasing it now that we're actually coming out of it. How's, how's that different, if at all? It feels slightly more optimistic um, and it feels like the reality of people being able to dance to this in a club is going to happen um, sometime soon. And also I think it's like been this kind of building not tension of like but anticipation to be able to enjoy this record outside your four walls. Um, so um, I don't know, the sun's out today in London and it feels really lovely. And so I'm very excited, but um, yeah, it does. It, I don't know. There was, there was a mad kind of hysteria when we kind of put it out the first time, this kind of mad, like, how do we work out how to put a record out? in lockdown how do we work out how to give it to as many people as possible without doing you know the normal forms and that's been something that's been so brilliant to discover how much you can get done through a screen and in the comfort of your own home um so yeah I don't know it feels I don't know I feel really relaxed and excited about people having this these new bits of music just because I feel confident that people have enjoyed the last bit so much yeah, well, there's a lot to enjoy. And what about touring? Because, I, Jesse, I know you've got a lot of things going on right now and touring may not be the, the main thing on your mind, but is it something that you hope to do a little later on? Yeah, and I, and I feel very frustrated that we weren't, be able to, we weren't able to kind of have an Irish date. Um, and I noticed. Sorry, yeah, don't. And I, and I noticed too, and I had a discussion with people and... I really, really want to play in Ireland. I have some of my best shows. I mean, I only really play in Belfast and well, that's Northern Ireland and, 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 and um, I play in Dublin and I've had some amazing shows in Dublin. One of my most favourite was at the, damn, what's it called? The Sugar, 
club the sugar hut sugar, sugar club yeah sugar club and that was that kicked off one of my first to- my first tour it kicked off and I've never forgotten that show and I talk about it a lot I need to come back to Dublin I need to come back to Ireland I love it I love the people there and I'm really sorry there's not a date yet well hopefully there will be soon and hopefully this means that you'll actually come back for longer you'll come and play a show and then maybe you'll come back and bring your mum as well and do a live podcast show that would be good that's a really nice idea yes I think that we've got a date so well, we haven't got a date but it's the date <laughs> Oh, can we go? Can we go to your podcast for a sec? Because that has become so successful. How did this come about? And like, what did your mum think when you first floated this idea by her? Because I know if I mentioned that to my parents, my mum in particular would go, "Huh? What's a podcast?" That's exactly what my mum did, <laughs> and I lured her in under false pretenses. She she didn't know what was going on. She just thought, "Oh, well, Jesse wants to hang out with me. Jesse wants to bring." cool people around to my house and then and then she realized the work that was no it's it's a pleasure and it's brilliant but um she didn't know what it was and 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 then I didn't know how much involvement she would want to have or would would have and then it was very apparent that she should be it it should be a double act and um and I think she enjoys it the majority of the time I think (laughs) Jesse, is it cool for you? Because I know with our parents, it doesn't matter how old we get. You know, when we're around them, we still tend to think of ourselves as the kid and them as the parent. Yeah. Is it cool for you, though, to see your mum as a human being? Because that's something some of us don't get to do. Yeah, I feel very proud of my mum when I see her in action. I mean, I've always felt like that. Whenever she's been able to meet strangers, she just shines. She's amazing. I also get really embarrassed by her, too. And I'm like, mum, no please don't say that and she's already said it but yeah I mean it's it's so brilliant to see so many people taking a massive shine to my mum because I think she's pretty great and now loads of other people do too and then out of it I love when stuff just happens organically right so you started the podcast then the cookbook happened your mum's reaction to that to you know being involved in projects with you that turn from a a conversation into being in people's lounge rooms living rooms kitchens yeah it's yeah it's been a wild few years and it just feels like we're having so much fun and you know the fact that we now I now now we consider our touring schedule my mum and I is talking touring schedule too I mean it's bizarre right she's downstairs she's just blown up the paddling pool though for my my kids her grandkids and so she's still my mom and she's still grandma which she's amazing at well see I think this is very smart of you because you're like mum come on the road and then you have a living babysitter as well Mm, you think it (laughs) works like that Mm. I mean no bless her she's she's babysitting on Friday so I can celebrate the release of the record and the book me and my husband will go out for dinner and she is amazing she's amazing I've but I'm adding a third baby to the to the mix that may just like feel unmanageable and maybe I've completely cocked up all of my potential babysitting dates you haven't cocked up but um how are you feeling about how how do you juggle everything because it's hard Jesse. yeah I, I I juggle with I mean I feel like Mrs Wobble the waitress I don't know if you know that book um uh, and uh and I feel like I'm constantly juggling things quite giddily um, but I do have really brilliant support. But my my husband, my mum, a nanny, you know, we, we all get involved. But it makes a difference, doesn't it? And we're bringing it full circle here when what you're doing, you know, a book called, uh, a food memoir called Omelette, your um, album is out, your podcast, when you're doing stuff that gives you pleasure, that must make a massive difference. Absolutely. And I'm not taking any of it for granted. Absolutely love what I'm doing. Well, Jesse, I'm going to start, end this as I started it. It is such a pleasure to meet you. And thank you for the pleasure you give us. Oh, well, it's my absolute pleasure. (laughs) And I'm holding you to your two dates in, well, just to begin with, your tour and your podcast tour. Uh, You're on. I'm happy to facilitate that for you too. Amazing. (laughs) Jesse, so cool to meet you. Good luck with everything. Good luck with the baby. Thank you. See you later.